Now we're in May, and this gentleman is getting ready to put a policy in place on wife and daughter. Okay? And he'll go last. Very noble. Wife, daughter. Okay, we've got a nine-year-old. Um, if you are someone that wants to, if you're, you're a mom, your dad, you got kids that are under 18 years old, and you're trying to do the velocity banking, you're trying to put that infinite banking policy in place for your kids, um, some of the criteria is you yourself, whether it's mom or dad, one of you need to have life insurance in place already. It doesn't matter what the life insurance is. It could be a term, it could be a whole life, it could be a, it could be a life insurance policy with your company. In this scenario, uh, since he is a doctor, he's got a, a massive um, policy on himself through, through work, um, as well as wife has a policy as well. So he was able to go ahead and just get started on putting a policy in place on daughter. And another thing that we did, which was interesting, without harming our cash flow to start this at her young age of nine years old, he was putting money into a college savings plan, 300 a month, I think. So that's 3,600 a year. Well, all we did was cut that off and redirect that money here so it can work better for us so that we can have access to it at a much faster rate and, and grow it and also have that massive, you know, uh, death benefit that will grow. So by the time this little girl reaches 18, 19 years old, okay, by then they'll be 100% debt free, 100% cash flow positive, all their policies will be put in place she'll have this massive line of credit that he can gift to daughter that he, he can you know he'll stay in ownership for as long as he wants and I, I think at any once she becomes 18 or older uh i believe that you can like gift the policy you transfer ownership to her now in my opinion i probably if i was a parent I probably would not, would not give my kid authority over a massive, you know, product or tool like that until they're like maybe in their 30s, right? Or, or even older than that, like when they're responsible, they've left the house, they know how to f take care of themselves and feed themselves and, you know, like they're doing their thing, they got their career in line. Or you, the parent, just remains the owner of it the whole entire your whole entire life and then you can you can divvy out money you know when when daughter goes to you know uh, college boom you give her a chunk of money and then when she get graduates college give her a chunk of money and then let's say she goes to you know uh, uh, secondary like more education gets a master's and give her more money and then she has she gets married you know or buys her first home like you can structure it however you like you know and then he's just going to keep throwing that money in there year after year. So um, pretty cool how we're now in the process. And this is, you know, case by case. Remember, this is case by case, people. Don't, don't, don't take care. Don't go nuts thinking you've got to, you know, you know, I've got people that have got big credit lines but not big income and thinking they can do a big chunk. And I'm like, hey, whoa, whoa, relax, relax. Suavecito, relax, calm down, hold up. So um, here's where we're at. We're in May. They've paid off 140,000 plus of debt rather than 113 in, in the same time period. Cash flow is over 10,000 per month. And now we've got a, um, now we're gonna start forming these policies. And the way we're gonna do it, all right, the way we're gonna set that up Okay, this is on this side, you know, that's the checking account, right? Income comes in for them, okay? Money goes in the checking account. Right here is the HELOC, and then this is the desired policies that they want to put in place. Rather than using his cash flow, right, that we gained, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to take the HELOC. 
all right? Take the HELOC, put it right here, and I'm going to structure a chunk that is similar to some of my annual expenses and monthly expenses. In this particular case, they have an expense coming up in July. So I was like, you know what? We're gonna take advantage of this opportunity here. Option one is come July or before July, this HELOC will, will go to zero, okay? Because they did the same chunking, right? They did a chunk in February and then they chunked this amount, but like over here, and then now we're getting ready to zero out the line of credit right here. In June, the, the line of credit is going to be at zero. So the thing that they're faced with right now is they have a tuition bill for their daughter. It's $24,000 for the whole year, I believe. $24,000 All right, that they, they need to uh, pay. And they have a choice of either paying it at once or like um, in, in, in payments, I believe, or something like that. All right, and all I'm doing right now is crossing out all the debts that are gone, all right? The only thing we've got left is this and the mortgage. That's it, five months. Oh my God, hallelujah, all right? So two things left. We're looking to start the policy. The reason why I was like, let's capitalize on this right now is because of that large annual bill. So when the HELOC is at zero, we're gonna take the same chunk amount, the 49,000, right? And we're gonna take a portion of that. The number that I have for them, I believe is gonna be 30,000 or 31,000, where 3,600 goes to start daughter's policy, and then the other 27,000 or so is gonna get dumped right into wife's policy, okay? And the way we're gonna design it is so that we can have $24,000 available in cash value. What do you think I'm gonna do with that money? I'm gonna borrow it out, dump it into the checking account, and then pay that annual expense of the tuition. It's money that I'm already going to spend. So rather than using that money to send it directly to the, to the school, what he can do is he can send it to himself first by starting that life insurance policy designed properly for, for maximization on cash and, and minimization on premiums, okay? Just so that we can take the money right back out and pay it. Let me ask you, does this affect cash flow whatsoever? or income or expense, no, doesn't affect anything. We're still gonna keep doing Velocity Banking because the other, the other 10K or so from the 49, right, I'm taking 30, so I still have, oh my God, I still got like 18, 19,000 available to chunk. That, that money can go here towards the student loans and start, he can start knocking that out, right? And then over here, since I'll have a policy loan out for the 24,000 or, uh, or less or whatever the, the bill actually is, we're not going to make a payment on it at all. We're just gonna let it sit there, right? In the policy, just sit there. We're not gonna make any payments to it. We've already did our chunk. That, that 27, 28K that we threw into wife's policy, portion of that goes towards premium, the rest cash, I can use the rest uh, to take out, pay the bill, all right? So now the tuition is settled. So that means that he didn't have to use his cash flow to pay for that annual expense. I have a lot of people that ask, so you know, how do you deal with you know, your annual taxes on the, on the mortgages, or um, annual expenses, insurance, and things like tuition, things like that. I'm like, hey, since it's, a, since it's a chunk of money, we could factor in that chunk in our debt tool chunk, throw it in the policy, take it right back out, boom, pay the thing. Let it sit there. 
We can let it sit there. It doesn't matter. It's not going to cost us anything because when we go to pay it back, we're going to restore it back to what it was. And we're going to use the bank's money to restore it. Okay. When replenishing the loans, does that go towards both the loan and premium slash cash value? Great question. So money went into the policy, right? And because I have the premiums, like not high and, and really low, part of that chunk from the HELOC actually pays the premium for the whole year. So I won't have an expense, okay? So that first chunk pays the whole annual premium and then the rest goes towards cash value. Now, the cash value that I wanna take out is gonna be somewhere around 23, 24,000 to pay an expense that I already am gonna pay for, right? I'm just paying it out of the policy. Just taking the money out. The, let me just read the question again. Ah, yeah, so when I go to pay it back, okay? When I go to pay it back, I'm gonna pay it back when I've zeroed out or got close to zeroing out the line of credit, the, the HELOC, right? Because that chunk that we make, we're, we're planning to make a chunk in July because the bill, the tuition bill is due in July. So part of 50,000, okay, part of it is all going towards these two policies over here. And then the rest is gonna go towards the student loans. And then we start doing velocity banking over here, right? Same thing, same concept stays the same. All income goes into the HELOC, expenses come out, right? Blah, 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 blah. We go through the months. Let's say he zeroes it out by July, August, September, October. Let's say it takes some four months, four or five months, zeroed out. So like October, November, right? Zeroes out the HELOC. What we do now is I owe 23, 24,000 on the policy loan. What I can do is take a portion of the chunk again and send it to the policy and I will replenish the loan. So I hope that answers the question. The next chunk will replenish the loan. There is no premium to be paid because I already paid it with the first chunk, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. I paid it with the first chunk, there's no premium. When I go to repay it, I'm paying back just the cash and then it gets restored back to what it was as if I never pulled it out in the first place. And my next option is I can let the money sit and grow, do nothing, keep doing velocity banking over here, or what we can do is structure the next chunk to pay his, his two car insurances for the year, his uh, property taxes for the year, and maybe his own personal taxes that he makes, he could pay it out of the policy. And that'll be around what? January, February. And then what? We do some more velocity banking. Come July, what happens? I throw another 23 into the policy and then I take it out and we keep doing it over and over again. The man is gonna create wealth just from that one annual expense of $23,000 and it'll probably rise because tuition with them private schools, they always increase it, right? <laughs> Every single year. You know, my parents out there, you know what I'm talking about. So he's literally creating wealth from expenses and we're not even using the cash flow because the cash flow is being used to wipe out the debt, right? So I'm doing both. Velocity banking, infinite banking. Bomb. Together. You're, you're like tackling everything all at once. So, so you're, you're using the bank's money to pay Uncle Sam and every other expense and the banks. And then we're using the bank's money. We're using our, are using our money to pay back what we use from the bank. And then we take that money again. The difference between all that savings and cash flow gains is for myself. And then I throw it here into that new strategy, okay?